Hey everyone, John Garrett here from hypertransitory.com and this is a compilation of some of my favorite productivity Photoshop tips and I didn't go too in depth on each tip uh, just for the purposes of time but feel free to contact me if you have any more questions. Anyway, this is kind of a long one so uh, sit back and, and uh, enjoy the tips. Okay, let's uh, do our first two tips from the uh, the top 10 here, and that's going to be keyboard shortcuts and menu customization. So uh, I'm recommending that you, you always customize your keyboard shortcuts. If you find that you are going and performing the same action over and over again, you're going to want to make that into a keyboard shortcut to save yourself some time and eventual pain from carpal tunnel syndrome. So... Uh, what I do is I use the image size a lot. Uh, I'll go up here, scroll down to image size, and you know I'll just keep doing that on, on many images. I'll have to, you know, do them one at a time depending on what I'm doing. If I can't run a batch, it gets old. So uh, unfortunately, I don't like the keyboard shortcut that Photoshop has provided me. So I'm going to change that. And the way to do that is go to the Edit menu, go down to Keyboard Shortcuts. And then um, I'm in application menus, which is what I want. I can actually go to the panel menus and the tools uh, as well, but I'm in application menus. You can see I've got Photoshop defaults here. It's not really going to let me change this. It's going to force me to um, make a modified set, which is great because you can't accidentally screw up these uh, shortcuts. Anyway, so I need to go to my image. Scroll down until I find image size. And there it is. So I'm going to select here and I'm going to type the key that I want, which is F1. And you can tell it's it's warning me, hey, something else is using this. And if I really care about this, then um, I can go to, I can say accept, which is going to make my change and go to conflict. And, you know, I'll do that, but really, I really don't care what happens with it. So I'm going to click OK on that. And if I go back up here, we'll see that my keyboard shortcut is now changed very good because um, that keyboard shortcut option shift I was not really cool for me I can just keep doing this one stroke I got my image uh, size dialog box which is very cool now some of you that really do prefer to use the menus if you want to just make it a little bit easier instead of you know scrolling through here and, and trying to target that one all the time you can go back um, to this menu area it's really the same dialog you know, here's the keyboards over here is the menus so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my image and I'm going to set a color on that just to make it pop out a little bit more so here's my image size and I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna change it to red um, if I click this eye icon that will remove it from the menu if things are in your way things you never use you can go in here turn them off and they're not in your way anymore but I'm gonna leave everything visible I'm gonna turn that to red click OK now when I go back to image as you can see it uh, it pops out a little bit easier and I can I can you know get to it and select it a lot easier so uh, if you must you can go ahead and do that if there's a, a menu command you keep using over and over again uh, you can actually save these shortcuts too <laughs> ironically you know look at the shortcut for keyboard shortcuts it's pretty awful anyway uh, so I've got this modified set um, I can now save this and you know it's really gonna it's gonna take you to a default spot to save these you, as you can see I've got mine already in there but you can save them and it will uh, you know it will save it in the right format for you you can name it whatever you want um, and the thing to do is you want to go find those and you want to uh, probably keep them somewhere safe just in case you have a crash or something you can always get back to your your preferred keyboard shortcut setup and that should do it for this tip let me know if you have any questions all right here's a real quick one a uh, quick tip if you um, want to get some more screen real estate back you can see I don't really have a very big monitor here sometimes I need um, a lot more room to deal with some of these things so so these palettes while useful are kind of in the way sometimes and if you want to just quickly get rid of them you can hit the tab key and they're all gone so, um, you know, just, just a real quick thing. Hey, I need space here. I need space. And then I'll command zero and I've got all that space to, uh, to work with. And, you know, then 
Command Zero will force it back into that space that I had before when I bring them back. Now another cool thing that goes along with this, I hit the Tab key, uh, hit Command Zero. Now if I hit the F key, it's going to start forcing that to a full screen. If I hit it again, it gives me some black there. And if I want to get rid of my rulers, Command Zero. Now I have got uh, a really nice full screen view. Uh, hitting the F key again is going to bring you back. Tab zero, Command R to get my rulers back, and it's really that simple. So again, you know, F keys are going to cycle you through um, these different views. Getting rid of my rulers again, Command zero will bring it to full screen. And it, it's a nice way to quick, uh, you know, get rid of all the distraction and check out the piece you're working on and, and just really get a different view of it. Stand back a little bit, get up and stand back from the monitor and um, really see what it really looks like without all the tools around. So let's just bring everything back to where it's supposed to be. And so that's our quick tip for the, uh, the menu or the, uh, the palettes and um, pressing tab and the F key will change your views. All right, now we're talking about the modifier keys. And the modifier keys are um, keys like the shift key, the command, control keys, option, and alt. Those are modifier keys. And um, they are keys that are, are going to change the behavior, um, usually of whatever tool you've got. Some of them don't have any alternate behaviors, but, but uh, a lot of tools, holding down shift, holding down option, it's going to do something to your tool and make it behave differently. So I'll show you a couple of examples. I mean, when you select a tool, I mean, I like to just hold shift or, or just, uh, you know, check option and see see what it does. Um, what I'm going to do first here, let's say I want to select this uh, sword and the sword is on its own layer. I'm going to command click. Uh, you see the modifier keys are doing something already. Command click on the thumbnail and I'm going to grab the outline of uh, all the pixels on that layer, which is the sword. So let's say that I want to select some of the background or select another box. I'm going to press the M key, get my marquee tool. And uh, well, if I don't do any modifiers and I select, then I lost my sword selection. That's gone. And if I just keep doing that, I don't, uh, I don't ever retain any of my previous selection. So I'm going to go back here. Now I got the sword. I, I want to add to this. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and shift is normally good for adding. Um, holding down shift, I'm going to get a plus icon under my cursor. And now when I drag out another selection, it's added to the current selection. So I'm keeping all that stuff. I can even do it with my lasso tool. You know, as long as I have the shift on there it's always going to keep adding to whatever I've got selected and conversely uh, if I hold down the option key I'm going to get a minus so that's going to tell me whatever I draw out here is going to be subtracted from my selection and the same thing with the marquee tool option is going to subtract and you'll see that behavior if I were to do my magic wand, pressing the W key, um, holding down option is giving me a subtraction. Now that's gone and subtracting from there. But if I were to hold down shift, now it's selected, added to what I had selected. And you can see that behavior in other tools as well. If I were to go to the... Um, um, Whatever this is, a clone stamp, yeah. Option is going to make me, it's going to make me pick up whatever I want to clone. I mean, it's not always the same thing, but it always does something. So uh, it's good to check that, you know, if, I, if I'm using my pen tool, so I can start clicking around here and drawing something. Now, if I hold down shift, it's going to start making those, um, you know, in, in, in constrained angles. So it always does something, it doesn't always do the same thing, but it always does something. Now, if I go here and I hold down my option key, um, see, I'm getting a, uh, a different tool. 
That's what it's doing for me. It's giving me a different tool where I can drag out stuff. So you can't always expect it to do the same exact thing, but I like to just check them and just make sure, you know, or just see what is it doing with this tool. Every tool has a different behavior, and those modifier keys are gonna gonna help you um, uh, perform your work a lot quicker because you won't always be going. Now I'd have to go and select that tool. Oh crap! You know now now I got to go back to the pen, and you know it takes a lot of time, especially um, when you um, you know if you have to select again and keep keep saving and subtracting from selections, you know it becomes a real pain in the butt. And those modifier keys are going to help you be a lot more efficient and a lot more, uh, probably a lot less frustrated, I should say, uh, from doing some of this work. Using the hand tool to move around your Photoshop document, it really is the best way to move around. As far as I'm concerned, um, when I first started, it was all scroll bars. If I want to move around this file, I'm going to take these bars, drag around until I get to the part that I want. And this isn't the worst file. It's not the worst file, but sometimes you're going to be working on some incredibly big files depending on, you know, what you do. Some of those files, um, it, it's going to be too much for you to always scroll around and, and not very efficient. And sometimes you miss the, the scroll bar and you'll be, you know, off in a different program or something. Um, so I'd advise to stop using those scroll bars um, and what you want to do from usually from whatever tool you're in you can press the space bar and you'll get this hand tool and you can see the hand tool is down here actually but um, uh, what I would recommend is not going to choose that you want to just press space bar and you can drag around your document just drag around to where you want to get to and as soon as you let go of space you're back in your tool so it's really pretty darn efficient, if you ask me. Um, and then you can, you know, back out and and move around. It's way better than than relying on these scroll bars. It's a very simple trick, and it's going to really increase your productivity uh, by a lot once you get used to it. In these later versions of Photoshop, this is uh, CS4. When I drag it, it keeps on going. That kind of threw me at first, but. Now I'm used to it. It's pretty fun. <laughs> but aside from that, that's really all there is to that tip. So use that hand tool, folks.